for Peruvians, or those with Peruvian heritage like myself. October is known as El Mes Morado, the Purple Month. In Lima, the capital city of Peru, many of the central streets become rivers of purple and white. Purple for the thousands of people in procession wearing purple habits, other purple garments such as ties and shirts, and purple detentors of all sizes. Detentors being patches akin to badges or insignias made of cloth and or cargo with sacred images on them, and white for the mantillas certain women wear, and the smoke from incense. The cause of all these celebrations is El Señor de los Milagros. El Señor de los Milagros, the Lord of Miracles, is a 17th century painted image of Christ crucified. However, it is not just any painting. Its history and attributed miracles have immersed itself into the very psyche of the Peruvian people and indeed has become an integral part of Peruvian national identity. While today's image bears the figure of God the Father on top, in addition to the Virgin Mary with her heart pierced by a sword, representing her profound sorrow to the right of Christ, and Mary Magdalene weeping at the foot of the cross to Christ's left, these are later additions. The image of El Señor de Milagros was originally painted in the early 1650s, most likely in 1651, by an Angolan slave brought to Peru. At that time, the Angolan community in Lima had their cofadia, literally meaning brotherhood, or as we might call it nowadays, a community house, in the Pachacamilla neighborhood. There, they would reminisce on their once had freedom, while singing traditional songs from the Atlantic coast of Western Africa and undertook rituals from their ancestors. In addition, they would tend to their sick and give their dead decent burial. This gathering place, as much of the local buildings were crudely constructed. In the case of the Cofadia, it was simply built of a dome. Nonetheless, on one of its walls, close to an irrigation ditch, an Angolan slave painted this image of Christ crucified using tempera. This was done out of his personal devotion. Although anonymous, certain accounts postulate that his name was Pedro or Benito Dalcon. On November 13th, 1655, at 2.45 in the afternoon, a strong earthquake shook the cities of Lima and Cajal. Many buildings collapsed, including mansions, places of worship, and many of the cabins comprising poor neighborhoods, including that of Pachacamilla. The Angolan community house was totally destroyed, save for the wall bearing the painting. Indeed, it was completely intact. The image survival was called a miracle. Thus, this wall and the image became a shrine for the local African slaves. Over time, the rituals and venerations and pilgrimages to this painting grew. These were not necessarily Christian and indeed included other religious practices. Therefore, the local parish priest, Father Jose de Menas of San Sebastian Parish, requested the Viceroy, Sir Pedro Antonio Fernandez de Castro, to intervene as to prohibit such activities. The Viceroy referred the complaint to the highest ecclesiastical authority for Risor and Vicar General Esteban de Ibarra as the Archbishop had recently passed away. After some investigation, Esteban de Ibarra declared that such gatherings 
must cease and that the image ought to be erased. Thus, between September 6 to 13, 1671, a special committee including the captain of the guard of the Viceroy, Pedro Balcazar, was sent to erase the image. Two squads of soldiers accompanied this committee just in case any trouble by the locals was to break out. However, no matter their attempts, mysterious events, or as other might call, miraculous events, prevented the image destruction. An indigenous man was sent to paint over the image, but every time he ascended a ladder to reach the image, felt tremors and chills. After a couple of tries, he fled in fear. A second man said to scratch off the image, likewise was unable to undertake the task. Lastly, a Korea soldier was sent, but he too could not destroy the painting. The soldier later reported that when he was in front of the image, he saw it becoming increasingly more beautiful and that the crown of thorns was turning green in colour. The locals protested loudly against the attempts of erasing the image and in due course, the order to put an end to the image and its devotion was revoked. Indeed, Esteban de Ibarra authorized the acts of worship before the image, with the first mass being celebrated on September 14th, 1671, just the day after their final attempt to destroy the image. This mass coincided with the Feast of the Exaltation of the Cross. Representatives of the ecclesiastical and civil authorities were present at that Mass. Soon after, the image became known as El Señor de los Milagros, and devotees grew. On the 20th of October, 1687, at 4.45am, another strong earthquake once again shook Lima and Callao, with an aftershock at 6.30 a.m. Callao was raised and parts of Lima likewise. Here too, the image and the dirt wall all survived and escaped, despite the chapel that was built in its honour being demolished. Prompted by this, a replica oil painting of the image was made and this replica was paraded around the streets of Pachacamilla on andas, which are similar to floats, but carried on shoulders. From then, such processions were undertaken yearly. The image was declared patron of Lima, Ciudad de los Reyes, city of kings, against the quakes that rock the land on 21st of September, 1715. Since this moment, the procession expanded as to visit various areas of Lima. On October 28, 1746, a massive 8.6 magnitude earthquake hit Lima, the largest in Lima's history. At the time, Lima's population numbered around 60,000 and the estimates of the death toll of this earthquake range from 1100 to 11,000. Due to such terrible devastation, devotion to El Señor de los Milagros further increased. Thirdly, following this earthquake, La Iglesia de las Nazarenas was built on the site where the Angolan Confidia once stood. It is at the sanctuary and monastery of La Nazarenas, which today houses the original image of El Señor de los Milagros, 
standing behind the main altar. From these beginnings, the procession in honor of El Señor de los Milagros has become the massive event it is today. Indeed, this procession is one of the largest around the world of Catholic popular devotion. This devotion is so close to the hearts of Peruvians that on the 15th of October 2005, the Archdiocese of Lima, in coordination with the Holy See, declared El Señor de los Milagros as patron of all Peruvians, residents and immigrants. That's to say that El Señor de los Milagros is patron of all Peruvians, people, whether living in Peru or expats living elsewhere. Moreover, under the presidency of Alan Garcia on October 18, 2010, El Señor de los Milagros was named patron of Catholic religiosity and spirituality of Peru under a formal resolution in law. These declarations of patronship, both religious and civil, are very apt as wherever a Peruvian community settles, El Señor de los Milagros comes along with them. Indeed, in most major cities in North and South America, throughout Europe and Asia, and in Australia, some form of procession or celebration takes place during the month of October. To end this short history of El Señor de los Milagros, let us ask, why the color purple? According to tradition, groups of pious women who cared for the churches in Lima wore purple as a sign of penitence. This stuck and became associated with El Señor de los Milagros. Thank you for listening and may the Lord of Miracles bless you.